One, uh, one individual that was killed. Um, Where was that? Probably related to, to the earthquake on the freeway and uh, our information that that was a Los Angeles police officer that have suffered damage and are closed uh, in, in the city and, and greater county area. And uh, there's no doubt that your people had difficulty getting around and are still having difficulty in responding to all of the areas that, that need to be uh, closed off, controlled, and to people who need help. Yeah, as you can well imagine, uh, the uh, resources of police and fire will be stretched very thin initially. Uh, as this assessment goes on and as they respond to emergencies. Have you called in all off-duty personnel? Yes, we mobilized the department. Uh, that means that we will have a split of all resources from the 12 hours, basically, of day watch and 12 hours of night watch. Uh, so we're bringing in off-duty personnel. And uh, in the greater region, I can uh, assume the same types of things are going on with other agencies. And we're seeing uh, pictures here from uh, uh, the, what is it, the southbound uh, control room? Could you tell me once again? Interstate, southbound Interstate 5 in Silmar, California. That's uh, where this collapse uh, occurred. Commander, maybe you could help out some of the people who might be uh, watching. There at the time. Yeah, we were part of the stalking crew that were all in there when it happened. Good. If you want to go in and take a look at this point, uh, Greg, I'll move off to the side. Can you tell us where you were? Um, I, we had employees located throughout the whole store that were stalking at the time. I myself was at the front when it started to shake. And I think for the most part, everyone just kind of dove for cover. Um, and then we called out for each other and everyone seemed to be okay. And we all got out of the store as quick as we could because it was pitch black. We couldn't see anything and we couldn't see what we were climbing over or not. But um, the smell of gas was very strong as were the busted pipes and water that was all coming down. So everyone just had to get out. What's, was this like the whole ceiling fall? It looks like most of the ceiling and some of the structures down inside as far as all the lighting fixtures and everything else was all down, as well as all the other products that moved throughout the store seems to be down. And what was your name? My name's Angie Walls. Thank, Thank you very much. Were you inside also? Yes. Good. Could you tell us what happened? Well, when the earthquake hit, I was on the phone calling home to see if everybody was okay. And as I was hanging out the phone, the earthquake started shaking, and the glass right here in the front desk was breaking. And I ran, I followed Frank, because Frank was... Um, going underneath the check stand, so I followed him, and I went under the check stand. When it stopped, I mean, there was just the roofing was on top of us. Everything is falling down. I mean, it was pitch black. We didn't know where anybody was at. It was very... Blue exploded and took at least five homes with uh, it. Uh, let me ask you, Go ahead. Bob, did this gas main explosion occur right after the earthquake, or was there a period of time when there was a fire and then it exploded? Because if there was a period of time first, Perhaps some of those people got out of those homes. It was a period of time, from what our understanding is. It was not readily, it wasn't like an instantaneous explosion. It took a little time, but it, it blew with tremendous force. And there you can see the graphic, graphic pictures showing exactly the kind of force we're talking about. The uh, scary thing is that's not the only location. And as uh, we pan over to the left, uh, what's the location on that mobile home park? San Fernando Road at San Fernando Road, just above the uh, 210 freeway. Uh, let me pan over here to the left. Is that the Olive View Mobile yes. Home Park? That yes, you that's right. And that's where we had a number of gas leaks, and those homes caught... ...able to get out. Okay, we're coming up here on this uh, broken overpass. Let me, and let me see if I get a shot in here. The only good thing about this is Charlie, it happened uh, early, 429, and on a holiday at that. Otherwise, the freeways, you know how clogged they can be in this situation. We had one fatality at this, at this intersection, somewhere in this region on one of the freeways that are down here on the 14. Uh, but you can imagine how much worse this could have been. So that's a stroke of luck, uh, as it were. It's also, it's also a stroke of luck in that uh, you know, families were together this morning, and so you don't have that that sense of parents trying to get to their kids. Look how close that one tractor trailer is to the edge there. You can imagine what a nightmare that is if you're driving along, you feel the earthquake and you stop, and, and then when you get out, you see exactly what, what you're on the uh, edge of there. You want to talk about fate? <laughs> that driver must be extraordinarily lucky this morning. You can also get a good gauge of the force of this thing by seeing, and there, there are the reinforcing bars. You know how strong these things are, how they have to be built to uh, earthquake standards in Southern California. And that gives you some idea of the magnitude. It just ripped this thing apart. This seems very reminiscent of what we saw a couple of years ago in the Oakland, uh, the Oakland earthquake. Exactly. In San Francisco. 
And Vince is right. These people, obviously, they're going to be there for a long, long time. Uh, they won't be able to get out by car if they're between, of course, the two, the two overpasses that are down. Track, track jackknife, uh, tractor trailers all over the place. Oh, yeah, two and that track. As we take a look at these pictures, uh, we want to remind you that you are watching live coverage of uh, this morning's earthquake here on Fox News. Uh, we understand that Cedar sinai Hospital in L.A. is just being uh, overrun with wounded. Apparently, they're just they're, a, a tidal wave of wounded is now walking into Cedar sinai uh, Medical Center in L.A. Other things to tell you that are closed, Los Angeles Airport shut down. Uh, there, apparent, there appears to be some kind of damage to the runways at LAX, uh, though we can't confirm the extent of those damages. Are we still high? Uh, also, Burbank yeah. Airport, there are some limited flights that apparently are leaving. The runways are not damaged at Burbank Airport, but there is some airlines before heading out. Also, the DWP uh, public health uh, statement here, they say if, don't drink any water out of your tap today unless you absolutely have to. Boil it if you can, that is, when you get electricity back. Uh, and they say if you work for the DWP, uh, get to work, uh, go to one of the areas in the San Fernando Valley, one of those substations there, if you can get in. Valley. We're going to go back now to Chris Harris, who is on the ground near uh, that, uh, that gas main break. Where, where exactly are you, Chris? Uh, we are just north of ba uh, Rinaldi on Balboa, just south of Lorillard, if you're familiar with the Granada Hills area. And what we thought was that mini mall and shopping center that was on fire was actually not. It was a huge break, not only in the water main, but in the natural gas line. So here we have the bizarre sight of flames firing right up out of water on Balboa, north of the 118 freeway. There have been four homes lost here, two on the east side of the street. Two Just southeast of where the 210 meets the 5. So you'll see this is all in the, uh, very close to each other. Now, is this a new fire, Jennifer? We were over in the last. Uh, we have showed you this mobile home park already. Uh, this is one of two mobile home parks uh, that is ablaze. They're about uh, a mile apart from each other. Now, what often happens, and I'm sure we've all talked about this before, but we need to reiterate: in a situation like this, you can get a small gas leak. Your pipe can just move uh, even a tenth of an inch, crack, and allow a little bit of gas to get out into your house. Then you flip on your light switch and the spark from the electricity in the switch will ignite a fire like this yeah. and create a, uh, a fire that has unlimited fuel because the gas, of course, is pouring into it. Now, we're not suggesting that uh, if, you, if you don't smell gas, leave your gas uh, alone. If you do smell gas, go to the side of your house and turn it off. There is a, a little bar there that you can turn sideways so that uh, you don't have gas going into your another, house. Another bit of advice, if, if you smell gas, uh, good idea not to use electrical appliances because that's exactly how some of these fires or to start. Turn a switch or anything. You turn like a switch. That. There's a spark, and then uh, then there can there can be uh, you know an explosion because the uh, natural gas uh, catches fire. Um, obviously, you know don't touch down lines or electrical wiring that may be exposed uh, because of the of the earthquake. I mean, uh, a lot of people don't have power on, but you don't know for sure, and you you don't you don't want to. Get electrocuted so be careful in, in that regard eric i'm going to interrupt you for just a moment we need to go out to claudia gomez who's in granada hills the site of where a road has buckled claudia can you hear me yes i can barbara yes i can barbara we are in granada hills we are at the intersection of gothic and san fernando mission what you are looking at right now is the 118 freeway or what's left of it in this portion the overpass at gothic has completely collapsed it's a pretty horrific site twisted metal uh there was a car that uh, apparently was on this road when it went down at the time of the earthquake. Miraculously, the driver was rescued without serious injury. Residents here, I guess, took him to the hospital and he was able to walk away from it. Miraculously, 